You know, I used to hate facial hair, but then you know what? It grew on me. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Black Dog uh, episode 12. Episode 12. Episode 12. <laughs> Silence was the stern reply from the uh, from the peanut gallery with my joke. I, I don't know what to say with them. No. It, it, start as I mean to go on. Start, <laughs> start and go downhill. I always imagine it's the same expression that they've got sitting there, um, as, as if you've seen your like you know your hero on stage and they've just had a rectal prolapse right in front of everybody. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Gather it up quickly, pick uh, it up for me. What has he done, yeah. <laughs> Mummy? Why won't he stop? He was my hero, and then he shat himself in front of four million people. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least our audience isn't four million people. Mm-hmm. Mm. Anyway, I bet it's four. We had it's four, <laughs> and it's only and three of them are us. Indeed, <laughs> I'm not going to listen to this shit twice after <laughs> editing it. Um. Anyway, so hello everyone, welcome to episode twelve. I'm Lee. I'm Darren. I'm Jim, and I'm Elton. And this week we'll see how everyone's week's been or not, depending on if there's anything going on, and then if there's any feedback uh, for last week's episode, which was um, Lord of War. Uh, we'll throw that in there, and then we'll move on to this week's movie, which is Denzel Washington as a far more um, rounded and updated uh, version of Edward Woodward, or Iwa Wuwa, um, as the equaliser. <laughs> Look here, you all. You all? Listen. Listen, I have a full command of the English vocabulary. Eh? Um, yes, but anyway, so the equaliser, a film which I found out was not about a man making a calculator. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, let's see how everyone's week's been. Um, I know there's not much going on with Elton, so uh, we'll skip over you lightly, sir, if that's okay. Yes, please. Please lovely, do. Lovely, lovely. We always so, skip over Elton. Oh, never skip over Elton. Unless <laughs> Screw you, later. Barnard. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Benny. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll move on straight on to Jim. So, Jim, how has your week been, sir? Uh, it's been a... Well, it's been a stressful few days, I'll tell you. Oh, God. Cool. Um, yesterday, I had that scenario anyone who makes a living using a computer has. Mm. Of, um, I just recorded a large chunk of stuff. I went to save it. Mm. And the computer went, nope. Oh. I ain't doing mm. nothing. Mm. So it's kind of, okay, try and... Con- Control out, delete, get task manager up. Okay, do, do, do. I'll look at that. I think get into Word. No, okay. Managed with some furious clicking, managed to get the file to save. Mm. Not where I wanted it, admittedly, but I was I was going to be picky. <laughs> You'll save? Just save it anywhere and I'll shut this damn <laughs> thing down. And, you yeah. know, because, you know, occasionally if you're working with like audio and video files, you can run out of memory and you kind of get a bit of a lockup. Mm. However, then I found everything else in Windows was being freezy and unresponsive. Mm. So fight to get task manager up again. That was an effort in itself. Get that and looking good. No, mm. this is weird. Mm. Isn't is all the RAM still there? Nothing's hogging the RAM. Mm. Processor isn't going through the roof like you'd expect. Mm-hmm. It's going, oh Christ, what's wrong with it? You know, listening to the hard drive, is it crackling? No, no. The fans are all going normal. Oh, Fine. Shit. Yeah. And then <clears throat> purely by chance trying to look through task manager and seeing what was running, I did notice something odd. Mm. That when it, normally with the menu, the scroll bars, I often just click and drag them rather than yeah. use the scroll wheel because it's quicker. Mm. That, having trouble doing that, the scroll wheel worked perfectly. I thought, hang on. Mm. Plugged in a different mouse. The problem was, nothing wrong with the computer, the fucking mouse button's fucked. That was the problem. <laughs> That's why it wasn't responding. <laughs> Get them every time. Yeah. <laughs> Just responding to one in five clicks. That was purely the problem. <laughs> and, and Jim Moon will be supplying IT advice to you for a small fee. <laughs> You've got work you need saving. Can't find your mouse pointer. Well, leave it to Jim Moon. <laughs> nice. Oh, Christ. Oh, God. But yes, always always check the peripherals, folks. That's the moral of that story. Nice. Oh, yes. But to all intents and purposes, if your mouse, main mouse button goes, it will give you every impression 
that mm. your machine is freezing up if it's only registering one in five clicks. Yeah, that will do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, new mouse, 20 quid, new computer, considerably more. So mm. I'm, I'm, it was one of those very, very stressful, but then you get that biggest drug of the world, the best drug in the world, mm. relief. Yeah. Oh. That moment you suddenly go, oh, thank fuck. <laughs> yeah. I know that feeling only too well. <laughs> so a story with a happy ending uh, and hopefully a useful one because <laughs> yeah. I, bet, I bet this has happened to other people and they've gone out and spent a grand on a new computer. <laughs> Dear, definitely. Yeah. It's not Ooh, yeah. often the mouse button will go, but... It can mm. happen. It mechan old fashioned mechanical error can happen. Mm, definitely. There you go. Mm. And that's my week. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Compact well, and bijou. <laughs> there you go. Okay, compact and bijou PC mouse problems. Cool. <laughs> okay, then well over to you, Mr. Barnard. How is about you? Ah, well, it's been a mixture of highs and lows this week. Yeah. Indeedy. Go on. The high being it was Maria's twelfth birthday this weekend. Right, so uh, you know, went to the grandparents and mm -hmm. uh, you know went over there and spent most of the day outside, socially distancing the birthday. Okay. So uh, it's got a wonderful cake as well, which we are still kind of hacking through. Mm -hmm. it's work of art, this thing, but it was big, and so right. we've still got most of it sitting in the fridge. Right. Um. So yeah, very nice. very nice, very nice indeed. Mm -hmm. So. High point there. Very much enjoyed that day. Um, mm. Then there was the low point. Oh, or okay. should, it should I say this was the? It was a. It turned into back into a, a high point. Um, right. This morning, mm. um, I, I flushed the loo. Right. And that's a high point, yeah. No, no, no. Your no, age. This, no, we were okay, age, yeah. right? We are <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I managed to flush it. So I flushed the loo. Yeah. And then it's like you know how you you kind of like your senses pick up on something you think that's not right mm. I, I suddenly realized i could still hear water mm. in the bowl oh. Uh oh three or four seconds after the thing had finished doing its its process prostate troubles no shut up <laughs> <laughs> so i've opened the stick a pencil the, up there and wiggle it around you'll be fine the lid. it's the toilet you bloody idiots <laughs> <laughs> grab the end grab the end <laughs> That's what she said. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, I, could, I couldn't resist that. <laughs> anyway, mm. um, I've lifted up the toilet lid, looked down, and there's water still pouring out where it shouldn't be. It's right. like it should have stopped by now. Mm. So um, I've lifted the actual uh, the lid, the cistern, looked in there, and the water's just going through um, the pipes there. It's, it's not mm. being stopped, right? Mm. So what I've had to do is I've had to wedge mm. two uh, wooden skewers so that the arm lifts up to stop the water from pouring in, right? So it's like, at least we're stopping the flow of water. So I've done right. that. Yeah. Um, I've got in contact with um, one of the local plumbers via mm -hmm. this site called, uh, I think it's called Local Heroes. Yeah. I, think yeah, I thought you said the Necronomicon. No. <laughs> you need to get a fucking plumber out. <laughs> Jesus. Is it local? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a demon, demon plumber. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look at the ancient um, ones. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's a, it's the many angled ones. <laughs> when they're not, um, <laughs> when they're not actually doing a, you know, trying to take over the world, they, they do plumbing and carpentry on the side. <laughs> So, um, you it's know, it's a lot more lucrative, I understand, the charge of their prize. Oh, oh yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Mm. So, anyway, um, managed to get this plumber and he was going to come out really quickly, um, mm. but he was going to charge us 240 notes to what? replace stuff within the loo and a ton of money as well. And a ton of money, <laughs> yes. So, um, no, fortunately, I, went back, I booked this bloke in and then I thought. I've got to give it a try because mm. I told Rhea about this. She's like, how much? Mm. So uh, I thought, right, let's go back and just see if it works. Unfortunately, mm. it started working again. 
and I right. don't know what the fuck it is I did, whether it was I clean, you know, I I drained the actual cistern or what, but it kind of rebooted the toilet. <laughs> I <laughs> reckon. <laughs> I, I reckon you got a bit of scale in there. That's yeah. probably what it is. Yeah, it, I reckon you got not... a bit of scale where the water comes into the cistern. Yeah, and and the the ball uh, lifts up. And closes the valve. I reckon you got a bit of sca- scaling up around there. Thank you, Jim. I was waiting, Jim. Oh my god. Could be. Could be. <laughs> when he's talking about balls hanging low, I mean, it was just there. It was right there. <laughs> I could have said ball cock, but I didn't. I yeah, just no, ball. Yeah. You didn't go for the low hanging fruit. No, I didn't. No, no I, I've did. been sensible. <laughs> 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 You see, now I'm, I'm thinking of that old not the nine o'clock news joke. Go on. Uh, the <laughs> Swedish for beginners. Go on. Or when he, he goes into a chemist and goes, I would like some underarm deodorant. Mm. Ball <laughs> or aerosol. Neva. I want it for my armpit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yeah. So, um, there you go. That was, that was good. That nice. Was good. Cool. Um, and I've watched one thing. This okay. week, okay. Uh, and that was Hamilton. Ah, go on. Yes, it came up to Disney Plus. We've only done the first. Well, actually, we've only done the first half of it because Maria had to go to bed. It's like mm. two and a half hours long. We started it quite late, so we mm. got to the end of the first sort of major act. But Christ mm. Almighty, I can see what the all the fuss is about. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. I loved it. I've even bought the soundtrack now. Yeah, well, I'll be honest with you. I have heard the soundtrack to Hamilton more times than I care to mention, and I haven't actually watched it. Right, watch um, it, get the context, mm. and then um, you know have that fixed in your mind. I mean, it's mm. yeah. By the way, well, it's, I should also mention it's not my playlist that's playing Hamilton. It's um, it's it's Katie's, uh, which does does seem to be on perpetual loop wherever she goes. Has she so, watched it yet? Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. watched it. They watched it this week. They watched it this week along with Frozen Two. Ah, right. Okay. <laughs> Disney Plus got its money's worth out of us. Yes, it did indeed. Mm. But um, yeah. Uh, wow. Mm. Really, really good. I was sat and gross through the entire thing. Yeah. So um. Cool. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. I highly recommend it to anyone. Yeah, anyone who's never heard of this thing called Hamilton. <laughs> No, they would have heard of it. You, is this a biography of, of a racing driver? Uh, yes, it is, actually. <laughs> yeah, Is he featuring on your uh, Grand Prix podcast, Elton? No, no, not this week. No, not this week. My oh. name is Little Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> Driving round is the unimaginable. I'm yeah. not going to wish my shout. Now, copyright this idea for the 2050 revival. Instead of doing it on ice, we yep. do it as F1. Oh, <laughs> Hamilton, oh F1. yes. F1 musical. They call me Alex. Alex. Oh, dear. Right. Anyway, yeah. Any, <laughs> anything else? Um, Just played one thing this week. Oh, yeah. And that's a game called The Sinking City. Okay. All right, and it is uh, based in the 1920s, and it's all the kind of H.P. Lovecraft thing. It's um, it's set in the Cthulhu universe, and you play a detective who keeps mm. receiving visions and has mm-hmm. to go to this place. I think it's called Oakford, which yeah. is a, this completely made-up place on the west coast of America. And the whole place has been hit by a flood, mm-hmm. um, and so it's kind of wrecked things. There's like you know barnacles up walls and stuff like this oh, and right. there are all these strange creatures that mm. are infecting various mm. parts of the city mm. um, and it's kind of like it, it really does seal the deal with letting you know it's part of the Cthulhu universe because the Innsmouthsmen in, Innsmouths? Yes. The, mm. the, the Innsmouth mm. residents have yeah. had to come to this place because Innsmouth has been completely destroyed Oh, by right. something, okay, <laughs> right, and they, it's it's great because the oh, the people from Innsmouth all look like they're half man, half fish, right? Yep. Is that how they're so supposed you... to be, Jim? Yep. The Innsmouth look. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it's called. Got that. 
Yeah. <laughs> and there's a in this place they've got like various different powerful families that are ruling various sectors of the city. Mm. Um, and the one one of the first characters you actually encounter looks like half man, half ape. Right. And he's very well spoken gentleman. I can't remember the name of the family. But mm. have you Arthur heard of anything Jeremy? like that? Arthur no. Jeremy, by any chance? <laughs> no, it's not him at all. Um, uh, this, this bloke's a bit of a. You can tell. Martens. Mm. No, possibly. No, it's not him either. Mm. Mm. But um, yeah. Okay. Uh, what so kind far, of, what kind so of good. game is it? Is it it's, like a third um, person? It's a third type? person one. Yeah. Um, and what it is, your your detective, the one you play, mm. actually has a link to the supernatural. He can. Mm. Um, what it is, he can detect when there's supernatural disturbances so if you go into a house and you you know that there's another room there but you can't quite get to it if you go mm. near one of the walls suddenly you mm. see the edges of the screen mm. kind of ripple mm. and if you go into uh, i think it's called other site right. what it does is you look around and you'll see there's a symbol on the wall and as you get closer to it these other symbols start swirling around it and mm. then all join in the middle and the wall disappears and you're able to get into it cool and nice. uh, it's got like a health level and an actual sanity level as well because <laughs> you can go completely fucking bonkers in this. Mm. And you see like um, if he gets to, as if it goes down the scale too much for the sanity, when he's in other vision, I caught him doing this, he actually puts the gun to his own temple. <laughs> right. And it's just <laughs> like, oh. But Hold you on. do get um, yeah. drugs that can counteract this. You can also go up in level so you can um, upgrade your, like, your mental resolve. That sort of thing, but um, right. yeah, I'm actually quite enjoying it. Did Did you get this on the Xbox Game Pass or did you buy this? Oh, I bought this because it came right down in price. I've been waiting to get my hands on this for a while now. Oh right, it's just it looks it's a bit of an unusual looking game. Mm. You know. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah. Nice. There you are. If you want a little dose of uh, video game playing, Eldritch horror sort yeah. of action. Get on that one. The Sinking mm. City. Yeah, I've heard it's I've heard it's very good, but I say finding time for me to actually play the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, might, I, I, I might be leaving that one to the autumn for the long dark nights. <laughs> oh, I would mm. suggest it. Um, mm. Make sure you've got someone sitting in the room with you, though, Jim, because if <laughs> you get attacked while you're in the houses, if you're going looking for clues and stuff like this and doing all these like side missions, they just you can hear them. And when you start hearing them, it's like, oh, fuck, they're about to appear. And they kind of just <laughs> morph out of the air. Mm. So it's just like creeping around the house so that they can't pick you up. Nice. So, so you know. So, Jim, you, uh, you, you're going to be starting a Hypnagoria Twitch stream? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have considered it. At least doing a YouTube video or two. <laughs> and I've, I've been looking into... Uh, um, Little capture cards, but no. uh, possibly a project for karma time. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. Okay, anything else, sir? Um, no. Okay, Is that yeah. actually. Well, um, not much to report from me uh, this week. Um, I did I say I finished Alien? Yeah, I finished Alien, didn't I? That was last yep. week. Um, but other than that, uh, Katie's uh, action cheese. Fest education continues apace with um, a double bill of Total Recall mm -hmm. and Red Heat. Ooh. Red Heat. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Rasta. Victor Rasta. Uh, at least it wasn't Raw Deal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, yeah, Red Heat. I, I have to say, Total Recall, I watched that all the way through, and I totally enjoyed it. I I still think it holds up very well. The effects probably a bit rough and ready now in by today's standards, but in terms of storytelling, I still enjoy it. But um, but fuck me, red heat, Jesus Christ! I, I mean, have you guys seen it? It's the one Jim Belushi, isn't it? As That's a Russian, right. yeah. What's in that cement? Yes, exactly. vodka. It's all vodka. <laughs> Exactly, all vodka. Have you seen it, Dal? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen it a few times. Well, uh, let me just say this now, all right? Mm -hmm. If you watch it again now, you'll be sitting there going, is Arnold Schwarzenegger actually in this film? Because 
literally all it is, it could, have been, it could easily be just a cardboard cutout of Arnie stuck in a corner all the time. He has about a dialogue line count of about 16 words. And Jim Belushi is clearly the person they want to make the big star. And all he does is act like a complete arsehole from start to finish. Ah, uh, playing, him, playing himself again. Playing though. himself, yeah. It's just like, ah, oh, do me a favour. I was sick of it by about halfway through. And I was trying to stick with it, but Jesus Christ. By That's the, end, the 80s for you. Yeah, yeah, that was terrible. It really it, it's was. It's the silly things like um, when I think he's waiting at a bus stop or a train stop or an airport, mm. and that lady walks past him. Mm. And just and eat. yeah. He, he's just rude to her. And you're like, that would never make it onto film ever again. No. But it's all supposed to be it's supposed to be done as a charming thing. Yeah. And it's kind of that weird thing of you can see like in the in the eighties there was that thing of being cocky being a cocky smart ass was kind of a charming thing because you got it in sort of Ghostbusters and all those kind of things. Ferris but, Bueller, the Ferris textbook Bueller, one. Exactly, mm. the sociopath that everyone loves that I don't quite understand. But um he, in this one, Jim Belushi is just a creep from start to finish, and he's just there's nothing likable about him at all. It's just like, and so Arnold Schwarzenegger just sort of props up doors and shoots people, and <laughs> he his his emotional range goes from stoic to stony faced. I mean, it really doesn't move at all, and I was just like, oh god, this is bloody awful. <laughs> it really is bloody awful. So anyway. But then, then off her own back, without me being around to watch it, thank God, she watched um, she watched Roadhouse. <laughs> Roadhouse, oh. yeah, and, and bring out the bigger. big guns. Bring out the big guns. Play nice until it's time not to. And be the nice. big bear. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so the old um, yeah, but apparently that went down very well. So the the rating currently is that a red heat is down the bottom of the list somewhere. Total Recall's kind of mid table, and Demolition Man, Tango and Cash, and Roadhouse are top tier eighties cheese by today's standards. Apparently, fantastic! <laughs> wow, everything that we know is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Understand. Well, has she done? Roadhouse, you know, no problem really with Roadhouse. It's just a slice of cheese that mm. if I'm up at two o'clock in the morning and it's on TV, I'll sit and watch it. You know, mm. but that's about it. Yeah, I won't put it above Predator, mind you. Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, not apparently, at all. apparently that's the case. What? Has she done? Um, K Nine or Turner and Hooch? No. <laughs> Tango and Cash. Tango and Cash, yeah. That, that's that's top tier, apparently. Right. Mm. Tango and Cash is top tier. And now, now the, the demand, the, the next request is for a script that is nothing but pun laden. So I can only blame myself for this as a parent, pun laden parent. Oh. So, so you know what the most pun filled, I looked it up on the internet. Do you know what the most pun laden script is? No. You're not going to like it, because I turned around and went, oh, no. Is it the 1995 Judge Dredd movie? No. No? It's okay. worse than that. Try Shut and take a guess. What? Try and take a guess. Um, as soon as I say it, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Who's um, the main lead, uh, the lead character? The lead oh, character is... Oh, sorry, the actor. Sorry. The lead actor is George Clooney. Oh. oh no! No! <laughs> no! No! Sud- no! No! Actually, Sud- yes, she deserves it. Yeah. Yes. Suddenly, suddenly, realization <laughs> dawns across the entire nation as everyone hears it and goes, "Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I to see you. Oh. <laughs> oh so, man. so yeah. So um. So pray for Mojo because sometime, some point during the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be watching Batman and Robin. <laughs> you only have yourself to blame for this. Yeah, I know. <coughs> this this should act as a government health warning against oh. overuse of. Puns. You should probably show the '66 Batman movie first. <laughs> yeah, probably. Actually, that's probably not a bad idea. That's probably not a bad idea at all. 
Because that's plenty punful. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's just but tasty. that one's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It is true. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's 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 pretty much been it for me. I mean, apart from apart from that, I've got the, my, my pain in my shoulder is, is turned into someone. It feels like uh, my left shoulder feels like someone's trying to drive a, a drive of a, a six foot sort of rail spike through my shoulder now whenever i try and lift water above sort of lift a glass of water above sort of sort of eye height on my mm. left arm so that's great so you know so i should lose complete control of that arm by the uh <laughs> end of lockdown you need to get one of those heat, wheat banks you can heat up oh, that's God. the best thing for it yeah and not step away from the computer for a week but I can't. I like the image. I know. I know. It's impossible. I know. <laughs> oh, but you'd be su- you'd be surprised that fixes it like nobody's business. Then you'd yeah. be good for about another another year and a half. I find before you, <laughs> before you <laughs> we overdo it again. Oh, but, shit. Uh, I know. Uh, <laughs> if any if anyone if anyone wants me to carry on doing my drawing and not sit next to the computer, I I'll reopen the Patreon so so I can buy myself an iPad Pro. <laughs> 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 not that we ever had patreon enough to buy an ipad pro the first time around he used to add um anyway yes so that's that um right so i think we shall move on uh we did have some feedback for last week's episode people just commenting on last week's episode um there was a couple of comments um the first one which is probably the one that's most relevant to the actual um episode itself was andy Palastides. Um, who actually put uh, an, a small note to you, Jim, regarding our, our conversation. We were talking about Lord of War and the military equipment and how cheap it was to not <laughs> send everything back. Um, and Andy, uh, being due diligence and all that kind of thing and a bit of research and some stuff, he posted on the Facebook group that um, the military, US and UK, will 100% just dump and leave kit behind after a conflict. This is mostly down to, and it's impossible to say without sounding like a conspiracy theorist, the military-industrial complex, because the arms manufacturers would much rather have the forces buy something twice than have them ship it back once. In the past, they would just drop things where they were, but now they at least scrap or render them inoperable to prevent the repeats of Al-Qaeda Taliban, um, who had their pick of US and Soviet and ex-arms deals following the conflict in Afghanistan in 1980. Case in point, and he links to an um, actual news report. Of course, now they ha- also have to figure out how to sell surplus kit back to police forces, but let's not go down that particular rabbit hole right now. Hmm. <laughs> yes, well, let's not. So uh, so apparently it is actually a practice that does happen. Um, as much as That's what they say to, ex- to explain where the weapons went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. As they're as they're as they're selling them off to the uh, local drug cartels, which they will later use as an excuse to take them down. Although I do know for the fact, with the fall of the Soviet Union, mm. literally they left everything where it was. Mm. Yeah, um, because basically it was every man from himself. Yeah, and everyone in the um, the countries that uh, were part of the Soviet Union but not part of Russia mm. uh, basically were kind of all right, the regime's gone, make your own way home <laughs> yeah. and uh, so basically people sold things off lock, stock and barrel mm. um, I, I know this because my dad worked in Kazakhstan and saw a good mm. number of tanks and combat vehicles being used by farmers to plough the fields who bought them <laughs> mm, well, <laughs> when, the, when the USSR collapsed yeah. there you go. true story <laughs> nice <laughs> Um, cool. Well, anyway, um, uh, another piece of feedback, or another comment anyway, was um, uh, Sarah Lazelle, Lucky Minty. Uh, hope you're well, Ooh. Sarah. Um, she said um, she heard that I'd mentioned that Black Dog Podcast was on Spotify, and she couldn't find it, um, and then wondered if she was making this idea up in her head. And I, actually, the truth of the matter is, we were on Spotify. We were on Spotify for precisely one episode. Um <laughs> Basically, what happens is our um, Spotify are a lot more stringent with their, um, shall we say, musical um, algorithms. And so our intro, our outro, our jingles, everything, basically Spotify just goes, nope, nope, 
and then basically after two strikes you're out kind of thing and sure enough after uh Lipsin, julie passed across th- th- four or five hundred episodes of black dog spotify <laughs> just went fuck off <laughs> and that was the end of that so um mm. yeah so you didn't make it up sarah we did put ourselves on spotify but we lasted approximately seven and a half seconds so that's that and lastly last bit fuck spotify (laughs) so fuck spotify yes um and fuck music companies for not sharing their wares when they're really not making any money out of the theme tune to bottom um (laughs) anyway so um the last bit of feedback was from the reverend org um Reverend Peter Organ, who does Borgcast and uh, Battlestar Borgcast, or Borgcast Galactica, rather, and a number of Star Trek-based uh, podcasts, which you can find on uh, Libsyn. Uh, and uh, basically, he started saying that we got him back into Dune, Dune 2, thanks to our conversation last week. <laughs> <laughs> um, Excellent. Yeah. But he brought he brought up a question which I had to look up, which was that we mentioned the um, House Ordos, which is one of mm-hmm. the teams that you can play in Dune Two, or one of the factions. Oh, yeah, and not in the books. No, that's right. He brought yeah. it up. He's like, is that, are they in the books? And it's like, actually, no, they're not. They were actually um, a, a a faction that was taken by the uh, games designers um, from a, a, a non-canon encyclopedia. Mm. So there you go. So someone, so someone from a Wikipedia style site basically made it up, and then along came Westwood, and went, "Oh yeah, that's right. I don't, I don't remember it myself, but we'll stick them in the game." <laughs> so there you go. Um, there you go. So uh, and I also found out that Dune Two is now. Um, I think there is a version of Dune Two now available on Steam. There you go. So that's uh, that's all the parish notices fit to print and uh, notes and retractions. Uh, also, I noticed that um, someone offered to help you out with um, OBS, Elton. Yeah, that's true. Did that actually happen? Uh, it will hopefully be happening next week at some time. So uh, fingers Brilliant. crossed. Brilliant. Cool. Cool. So um, yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. It's as easy as that. If you want to send any feedback in, or if there's anything we say on any of these podcasts, you uh, have a little thought on then leave a little comment on the Facebook group. That's facebook.com slash groups slash Black Dog Podcast. And, you know, if there's anything we need to talk about on the podcast, we'll just mention it out here. So that's cool. Right. Okay, so that's that. And now it's time to get our best B&Q DIY clothes on, (laughs) our best overalls, get a nice um, old sort of digital watch that goes did, and um, because they all have to go did, and um yeah let's start with our review of the equalizer roll the jingle i see it's nearly five o'clock i'm here at home my work's all done No question where I'll be tonight A place of cinematic fun It's the lockdown, but I will not pout Oh, my friends, I won't be seeing this out Alone There's the Elton and Jim and Darren uh, All sitting far apart for social distance uh, We're at the Shutton Cinema Down in the bunker of Shun Down in the bunker of Shun Fellas, it's been nearly five years. You gonna let me out now or what? No. <laughs>
show. Right, okay, so the equaliser. No, it's not that. Oh, not that one. Is no. a 2014 American vigilante action thriller film by Antoine Farquhar. Farquhar? Farquhar. 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 Um, Antoine Farquhar. Um, loosely based, loosely in a very big inverted commas, based on the 1980s TV series of the same name. It stars Denzel, Denzel Washington, Martin... Martin? Oh, Jesus Christ. Sorry, I thought you were going to say Dencher Washington there for a minute. So. Yeah, Judy Dench Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe Grace Moretz, David Harbour, Bill Pullman, Melissa Leo, and Martin... I can't say his bloody name. He's he's New Zealand actor, played the Russian guy. Martin Sokas? Sokas. I'm going to say Sokas. Probably wrong. We'll go um, with that. Yeah, it's close enough. Um, the Rent a fil- baddie. Yeah, it would. Yes, yes. The anti equalizer, the negativizer. Um, <laughs> the film uh, received various reviews, which we won't go into because we're going to talk about it. Um, many praising the visual style. Um, no, nevertheless, it, it became a commercial success with the worldwide gross of from a budget of fifty five million dollars. What? How much did it earn, Darren? Oh, I think it was uh, 15 six-inch nails and a Juicen's <laughs> debit card. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jim, what do you think? <laughs> uh, 30 seconds on a stopwatch. <laughs> nice. And Elton, what do you think? I'm going to be sensible. And I'm going to say <laughs> 75 million. You reckon it earned 75 million? Well, it actually earned, from a 55 million budget, it earned $192 million. Ooh. So Ooh. there you go. Um, which then prompted a sequel to be made uh, in 2018, both with Washington um, and uh, Farquhar returning. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, and the, the writer as well, Richard Wenk. Gotta be careful how I say I that one. <laughs> Wenk and a fucker. <laughs> yeah. Wenk and a juicens. Um <laughs> euphemism. Um right. So, um let, before we get into the actual discussion, I mean let's just go quickly around the table. I mean, Jim, we you picked this film, so we know you, you obviously liked it or you, you know did you had seen it before, hadn't you? Yes, I had, yes, yeah. Cool, cool. Okay, well, we'll get to you um, uh, last then. So what we'll do is we'll go to Elton. What was your just just headliner? What did you think of it? Just headliner. Mm. I was really surprised that Mm. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Nice. I was, I don't know what I was expecting. I I knew about it, and it's kind of one of them things Mm. in films where you think, I might get around to it if it's on TV one Mm. day, but I'm not going to purchase it or Mm. go to the cinema or see it or anything like that. Mm. But you know what? Yeah, man, it was good. Mm, A little long, Mm. but it was good. It was well worth the watch. Cool, cool. And what about you, Dal? Oh, God, yeah. I actually went to the cinema to see this. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I mean, I love films like this, John Wick, you know, that Mm. kind of thing. And... Yeah, this very satisfying. Nice, cool, cool. Um, uh, 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 for me, I I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed this film. I I I have a few issues with it, but I always have issues with pretty much every film. That's not shouldn't be a surprise. But um, no, I I I did really quite enjoy this. This was not what I was expecting. Well, it was to a certain point, but. It it did things in a way that I wasn't expecting it. Let's put it that way, which we will get into in a bit. And Jim, you you watched it again for the second time or third time or whatever. This is I think the third or fourth time. (laughs) Right. Okay. Uh, Because I first I first saw it on a plane, Mm -hmm. and it's kind of I have fond memories of the uh, original series, Mm -hmm. which we shall now refer to as the Ewa Wooliser. For the sake of clarity, <laughs> the Ewaliser, you were all was you were all Eliza, and you know, let's be honest, the, the track record of taking old TV shows and making modern big budget movies from them, mm. it's a pretty piss poor field. Mm. It's probably it, 
probably down there with video game adaptations for mm. fucking producing god awful movies in the main, made by yeah. big stars with too much money and just mm. wrong headed. Mm. But you know, I was on a plane, and I have a certain criteria for watching films on a plane. Mm. I I don't want to see anything that might be too good on a poxy screen with. <laughs> With bad sound and being interrupted by people trying to flog your booze and duty free every ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I always go for some sort of mid table or stuff like you know I wouldn't normally maybe watch or or stuff I don't care if I get interrupted by basically. Mm. Yeah. And um, I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. So you know, so much so it's kind of well, I'm gonna have to go rent the DVD of this and watch it properly when I get home. <laughs> mm. Nice. <laughs> and then then sort of. Uh, I've, I think I watched it again with my dad as well when he was looking for something. Was going, oh, you've got to see the Equalizer. You really like mm. this. <laughs> nice. Um, and, and what surprised me was it was it kind of it takes the idea of the show, takes it in a different direction. Mm. Um, and I think it's an interesting pairing with John Wick that came out the same year mm. uh, for a compare and contrast. Yes, because I think it does. I'm I'm a bit of a sucker for vigilante movies anyway. Mm. Um, probably because growing up in the '80s, every second film in the video shop was a vigilante movie. <laughs> yeah, but um, this one I think is it's kind of you know it's it's the thinking man's vigilante, <laughs> mm. and there's a lot in it that's just kind of actually I think is just really beautifully shot, and it's a film every time I've gone back to it, I just pick up a few more bits from it that I hadn't noticed, and just kind of oh that's really just nicely done, you know. Far nice, far more nicely done than the film this really warrants, to be mm. honest. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, but that's what I like about it is, it, you know, it's kind of, you can take a pulp idea, but you don't have to do it for fourpence and a button and go for the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Cool. Right. Okay, so generally positive, which then is kind of interesting because we're all quite positive about it. And... I wasn't going to bring this up straight away, but now actually I'm just looking at it. It seems to have got kind of mixed reviews across the board. Now, this brings me to my first question, which is, do you think that this film is better or is, is it helped or hindered by the title, which then brings up the thought of, you know, You've got your sort of your Iwa Wuwa stomping around with a Jaguar in the fog with 80s fog and lots of <laughs> neon. Hmm. Or do you think it would have been better if they just called it something else? Or do you think it's actually a benefit that you... Uh, what I'm trying to say is, do you think the, 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 the title and the implication that it's somehow something to do with the original series actually is a good thing or a bad thing? Because... Obviously, it did really well in the box office, but it didn't do very well critically. And hmm. whether or not it's whether or not people expected something and didn't get it. So the name of the Equalizer could have hindered it ever hmm. so slightly because because people have like that nostalgia for the old yeah old grainy VHS version. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And you know, like I say, a sort of. You know, sort of, you know, a sort of late, a late middle-aged sort of Edward Woodward kind of stomping around in a trench coat with a jaguar, while I, while some naff, naff sort of tangerine dream light plays in the background. I think you always run that risk mm. with with doing that because you mm. you have your um, you have your nostalgia critics. Oh God, mm. you remember him? But yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> and and. They they kind of hold on to what they remember, mm. and, and then someone comes along and does like a, a 2014 version of their thing, and they're like, "Well, this isn't exactly what I used to watch, is it?" Mm. And that was a TV show, and this mm. is a film, and that's wrong, and he's wrong, and he shouldn't be there, and that that's not working for me. Mm. And so you could end up going down the wrong path if you hadn't if you'd named it something different, mm. if you named it. Um, Home Depot. I, I don't know. <laughs> you can do it if you B and Q it. Yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> then it might have gone down differently. You might be like, oh, okay. Yeah. But you, you kind of want that mystique about the uh, Denzel's character going into it. You, you kind of know that he's got a, a past behind him already. When you know you, you're going into the equalizer, you, you know there's something there already. Hmm. And that helps it flow along. So you, you 
kind of accepts things mm. uh, by not knowing about his history and it not really being spelt out either. Mm. Mm. So it you accept it because it comes from a TV show. So you're like, okay, well, maybe it's from that. It's fine. I, I can deal with that. Mm. But okay. uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I think it might have hindered it a little bit. Hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Any else got any thoughts on it? I mean, mm. well, I know personally, I thought, oh, really? What are you doing? And I thought, well, it's mm. Denzel Washington, mm. and you know, I have a great affection with Denzel Washington, and mm. he generally doesn't do shit films. Mm. In yeah. fact, if Denzel Washington's in a mo- in a movie, it's worth watching, mm. and you know, not just because he classes the place up, but generally, he's. I can't really think of an or oh, a stinker he's been in. <laughs> mm. You know what I mean? It's some maybe a bit unremarkable, but um, not set the world on fire movies. But he, he's not done a Sharknado or some you know ghastly train wrecks. If you know what I mean? Which yeah. is which is yeah. you know quite shrewd for an actor and bloody lucky as well. Mm. Um, but you know, I was glad I gave it a go, and it's kind of. I think for me, he kind of. And, you know, I can see for some people going, well, it's not Edward Woodward. It's not the same sort of setup. But mm. for me, I felt the kind of the same spirit was there mm. of, you know, a man with, frankly, terrifying skills trying to do some good with them. <laughs> mm. But it's also it's kind of he's got the same sort of gravitas as Edward Woodward. And, uh, and I think he'd passed on by the time this was made. But mm. I know, that, you know, Woodward would have been over the moon to have uh, what, a Denzel Washington, an actor like that, playing a big screen version of McCall. Mm. He'd, have, he'd have absolutely loved that and been very, very honoured. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I think the kind of, there's a lot of superficial differences, but at the same time, I think it, it does sort of, I don't know, it just presses the right kind of buttons. Because the Equalizer was always quite cerebral, mm. as well as being vi- supposedly quite violent, but it's actually a lot, quite clever and shrewd and generally outwitted people rather than nailing them to the wall, which is kind of what McCall does, but he's got the steel behind it to pull it off, which, to be honest, on the TV, Woodward was always a bit bit too old to do that. Yeah, you couldn't yeah. see, yeah, you couldn't see like a, a 60-year-old man in a, in a fucking camel coat facing down a bunch of gangbangers <laughs> no. <laughs> underneath, underneath the arches. But the thing is, if you know there's that thing kind of um, McGowan did Danger Man, Mm. And he kind of got fucked off with doing the spy bollocks. And he wrote his own series, The Prisoner. And the speculation is, is Danger Man, his John Drake character uh, mm. in The Prisoner? Well, mm, there's yeah. similar sort of vague things about, you know, because uh, Edward Woodward, when he was younger, he did play a very tough character, Callan, who was a cold-blooded mm. agent. Mm. Yeah. And there's, there is that sort of fan theory. Is, is uh, you know, is McCall in The Equalize actually an older Callan who's mm. now putting his you know government killer effectively skills to better use in uh, to get some redemption in the in the, in the, in the last years of his life mm, and that sort of i think meshes very well with this the with washington version mm. yeah that's uh, right. and i'm sure i'm sure that was kind of all on their minds and that's how they sort of thought the way to this new incarnation yeah sorry Dal, are you going you going to say anything about that or about the equalizer sort of weighing in on it or uh yeah i i i think that people who went to see this movie either you know a lot of them didn't care or didn't even fucking know mm. what the the old equalizer tv series you know mm. i think the the oh it's Denzel washington the equalizer will go and see that mm. so um yeah i i don't i don't know if if it had been nearer the time when i don't know when was the when was the edward woodward series out Oh, that was like late eighties. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I, I think it's yeah. Like, oh, well, I've just googled it. Here we go. Eighty-five to eighty-nine. Okay, and when did this one come out? Uh, Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. There you go. By that time, you know, really, most people mm. probably would have not even heard of the original series. Mm. You know, so um, yeah, I don't know if that. I don't think that affected it at all. Okay, but I'll tell you one thing: um, mm. no matter what you might think of the, you know, the film itself, you've got to agree. Denzel Washington, he nailed it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> where's, 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 where's my CSI Miami? Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, God. <laughs> oh. I've been waiting just to come out with that. I'm just <laughs> sitting there, oh, any minute, any minute. Come on. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Have it. Have it. Um... Okay then. Well, I tell you what then. Let's just move away from the TV show because it's too easy just to keep falling back on comparing. Um, but what is it about? I mean, you know, Jim, you brought up like the Equalizer and John Wick came out at the same time, and John Wick, I mean, to me, is like a cartoon. It's wham bam, thank you, ma'am, and it just does not stop. It's a relentless kind of ninety minutes in and out. Lots of fighting, bosh, bash, bosh. Whereas, and this may come back to why the thing kind of didn't go down too well critically. What surprised me with Equalizer is how little actual action there is in it, in its rather long running time. Because it is somewhere in the region of about, sort of, yeah, it's about 120, 130 minutes. And yeah, so two hours ten, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah something like mm. that. And that's not to say that's not to act as a diss on it, but I was going to say that with the equaliser, what the equaliser was kind of being sold as, and what it pretty much is, is it falls in, as you say, Jim, to that sort of mm. um, revenge vigilante genre that we used to see all the time in the eighties and straight to video, like like sort of Death Wish and. You know, all these kind of things, you know, Blind Fury. <laughs> um, you know, those kind of things. <laughs> that's that's quite that's quite a that's quite a sort of either or, isn't it? Um But you know, that that whole thing of, you know, one man pushed too far, goes off and does you know, does the bad thing it does what needs to be done. And I'm wondering whether or not when because everyone was saying what they were expecting when they were coming into this film, but did, did you find that you were kind of disappointed that it wasn't a sudden, you know, he he sort of because he because it wasn't a sudden. Here comes the action, and then the film takes off. Or was it? Or was the deliberate pacing and the kind of sudden burst of action with large, big swathes of just like just getting to know the character? Did you find that better or worse? Because, because, like I say, when you see a, a revenge flick, a vigilante revenge flick, usually it's like as soon as they get triggered, like First Blood, for example, as soon as they get triggered, that's it. You're into sort of like the whole rest of the film is the third act. So what did you think about that? Did you like that pacing? Did you, Or did you want him to suddenly do that whole thing of suddenly kicking off and then just bringing everyone down? anyone <laughs> uh well for me it's kind of i felt kind of all right i'm gonna i'm gonna quote meatloaf here bizarrely right meatloaf i saw it many years ago in an interview yeah um someone asked meatloaf do you can you consider yourself to be a heavy rock singer or a heavy metal singer mm. and he said well i, I consider myself to be a rock singer because rock has like Mm. Ups and downs. Where for me, heavy metal, it's kind of like just going full tilt from that, going ding, 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 ding. Now, John Wick for me is like that. That film gets halfway through, and it's kind of you up to ten on your guitar, you up to ten up here. Where'd you go? Where'd you? You know what I mean? But the thing is, the film can't go up to eleven because unfortunately, it twisted the knob to eleven, snapped it off halfway through. Oh, God. In the nightclub scene. Yeah. And after that, it's got nowhere to go. They just yeah. can't think of anything big enough for him to do. And that's kind of unsatisfying. Yeah. Whereas for me, especially on, on later watches, I kind of think the actual, although it's easy to compare them to John Wick, um, I think the closest sort of analogue to the equalizer is actually Taxi Driver. Oh. And it's that slow sort of build. But instead of, But this is a man who's kind of doing things for good and, and isn't a crazy man like Travis Bickle, but it, mm. he's got a similar pace to, you understand this character, his world, and then he kind of, he gets mm. into something and a bit further and a bit further, you get these bursts of violence and then you kind of, you're waiting for some more and that's more satisfying. Mm. I think, you know, the, I mean, I know a lot of people love John Wick and, you know, I'm not dissing if you do. And it's just, you know, for me personally, I just kind of got bullet, well, not punch drunk, bullet drunk. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of he needed to bloody drop a nuke on that city at the end to try and top 
what had happened in the middle. Mm. And for me, a, you know, a revenge movie or a vigilante movie, you've got to build up to that big final kill. Mm. And it's got to be satisfying. It's a bad man has to die in a bad way, mm. in, in a way that you just go, yeah, fuck you. That's, that's, the, that's the, you know, the dynamic for these movies. Mm. And yeah. I think kind of for me, it's like the fact that this movie, it makes you wait for it, but it also actually makes you think and care about it. It gives a proper human element to it. Mm. And that gives, although the action is quite small scale, it gives mm. it real stakes rather yeah. than the cartoon stakes of kind of, well, I've actually shot 1,500 rounds. Where was I keeping them? In my pockets. They're magic. Kind <laughs> of. <laughs> my magic pockets. Um <laughs> Actually, I was going to say you, you've you've reminded me of my um, Michael Bolton song analogy again. <laughs> <laughs> oh when, God, yes. When that he gets fits here, yeah, yeah, exactly. When he he does he, he goes he goes up a key just singing the first chorus, and then after that you don't know where he's going to go from there. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, you got nowhere to go. <laughs> you've got another three minutes of this, Michael. You're going to bust a blood vessel. <laughs> Michael Glass Ceiling Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> so what what about you, Elton? What did you think of that, that pacing? Did you like that? I loved it. Mm. I loved that slow burn of it. Mm. I th- I thought this was miles better than John Wick. Mm. I really didn't get on with John Wick. Mm. But I thought this was... I would rather sit down and watch this out, right. out of the two. Mm. No doubt about it. What I liked about it is... It was a slow burn, and when you got to the, mm. when you got to like the the Russian's office, mm. and you thought, okay, this is the um, the big bad already. Yeah, this is good. I'm liking this, mm. and then all of a sudden, Denzel did like his, his witchcraft thing of like closing the door a couple of times, turn the light <laughs> on, otherwise my family will die, type thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was okay. He's calculating something. That's really good. And then he just wipes out the whole room. And it, it wasn't over the top like, let's say, like Jason Bourne. Mm. Jason Bourne was superb when it was first there. Mm. And it changed the whole genre. Mm. But looking back on it now, it's a bit too quick, a bit too quick cut and everything. This was a, a bit of a slower pace, mm. but it worked really well. And you, you could kind of see what was going on, and it was methodical. There was a reason for things to happen mm. and and when it needed to to pause that action it did mm. so you could just soak in what was going on mm. and I, I think it did that in the action and also in the bits in between the action as well it slowed things down a little bit yeah and yeah. and wiping out like the the russian guy mm. i was going okay well i thought that was going to be the bad guy all the way through it but no mm. no no <laughs> oh no 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 they've changed things up and yeah. i like that 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 means that you are introduced to someone and they are removed and then you've got someone else to come in <laughs> i really like that when when films do that mm. it's uh it, it's it's different because not every film does it every film not every film but most films start off with the bad guy and you're led through to the very end where you you see the bad guy fall Mm. Whereas this, you have the bad guy. He he's dealt his comeuppance, but then the our um, our hero has to deal with that comeuppance. Mm. And I, 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 the more I think about it, the more I really really like it. Nice. It, it's really dealing out with shitty people mm. and and dealing with shitty people. And he he deals with situations where they are. Mm. Uh, it's it's easy to say, but he he kind of balances out mm. what the the shittiness of that person, mm. like with uh, old uh, what's his name um, David Harbour, mm. Mm. and that's the one that was in the car, wasn't it? That, that's that's right, the, yeah. uh, the 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 copper in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was almost suffocating him in that car, mm. and yeah, it, it it's just a nice nice balance you know it it does snap quickly into scenes and you feel like something happened there and it, we didn't wasn't shown that and mm. now all of a sudden we're in, in this room with this guy who was just in the car mm. 
It was a bit quick sometimes. Yeah. And, and getting to places as well. Mm. But I, th- I thought the pacing overall was really good and it didn't feel like a two hour plus movie. No. No. What about you, Dal? Is you, you sort of down with that or you got a, got a different opinion on it? No, I, I really like the pacing. Mm. Um, it's the, it's that slow burn mm. on this that I think really works well. Yeah. Um, again, I like, I like the way this, this works. That little bit when he, he clears the room mm. of all the Russians yeah. and then he looks at his watch and he's like, oh, Oh, I took a little bit longer than I thought. <laughs> yeah, he, he makes that sort of uh, all right. Well, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> he's, that, he's just oh. oh, yeah. He's more worried about the timings and the fact that he's just executed mm. all these people in the room. Yeah. Um, what I do really like about it, and I mean, mm. don't get me wrong, I really like John Wick. You know, mm. I like those films. They're just, you know, it, I love watching the 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 hero just taking the bad guys apart, mm. right? And, you know, John Wick's character has got his method of taking people, which is shoot them in the face. Right? Repeatedly. <laughs> yeah, just twice. That's it. Two shots. One bang, in the bang. body, one in the face. Yeah. That's it. And you don't get an enemy. No. Then, right? It's a it's a old strategy as well. I think I've heard it said in a few pieces of fiction. You mm. know, completely kill them. You haven't got an enemy coming up behind you from somewhere then. That's it, you know. Yeah. Um. It's it's the it's this the way he slowly methodically takes apart the organization. You know, he does mm. his he does his um he does his homework, and he yeah. he he can outsmart these people. He mm. he knows the tricks. He's been there before. It's the mm. whole thing. I like when that nice setup scene where you see him sitting in the bathroom. Yeah. fixing himself with honey and that and you see the guys coming in through the door and they're working the way and they see the bathroom yeah and they see the light and then they go into it they crash into it and there's nothing there yeah you know and you realize he's actually got a second flat and he's watching them mm. from that second <laughs> flat what yeah. i thought was it f- i know i've seen the film before but i thought does he blow the flat up mm. with them in it because you know that would be typical Pretty- sort of john wick type yeah thing to do but um no it's that not going over the top it's mm. that he doesn't need to because he knows what he's capable of mm. you know it's the um uh, and uh, that's it that's what i like about it as well in john wick you mm. have this whole thing it makes a big play about you know he you know, john wick was married and he loved this woman mm. and he gave up his life of doing what he did for her now, there's the same thing with this, but it's not in your face, right? It's suggested. Yeah. And you even see um, it's before he puts the final um, the final nail into the big bad guy. It's mm. as if he's saying to his dead wife, I've got to do this because this is important. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, the line that he's crossing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, go- I've got to cross this line because... Mm. I know you wanted me to give it up, and I've kept my promise all this time. Because mm. you see that as well when he goes in to see the Russians to begin with. He offers them the money, and it's when he gets to the door. It's not like this is something he's planned all along. Mm. He just walks at the door, and it's as if there's a bit of his conscience that says to him, are you really going to walk away from this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, can you... You know, uh, to to quote um, Black Widow, right? There's a lot of red on your ledger. Mm. Are you going to walk away from this and not clear some of it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it, it's not in that, and I don't mean it to sound so mercenary. It's, he knows this is what he should do. Mm. He knows that, you know, because he said he's done bad things in his past. Yeah. And so I honestly believe the character himself, you know, Deep down, he wants that redemption. Mm. And maybe he feels as though he was never good enough for his wife and that he keeps doing this because he loves her so much that Mm. he wants to be a better man even after she's passed. Mm. That's how much of an effect she had on him. Mm. 
you know and there's that you start thinking of that and there's even more sort of weight to mm. his actions yeah you know so this isn't somebody who's just out to be bloodthirsty he even gives david arbor's character you know he convinces him mm. to do the right thing mm. right forget all the torturing bit in the car it's when he's when they're in that the the, the lockup mm. you know oh and, and he gets like, yeah yeah you know he, and david oh you see he starts cracking he goes oh i, I used to be a good cop you know yeah mm. and he's like we'll do this for all the good cops mm. just do this yeah i think i think that's that's the interesting thing it, that kind of sets it apart from the uh from the usual sort of um revenge thrillers uh, mm. is is that that sort of like he gives them the chance and he makes them do the right thing or tries to make them do the right thing bef you know until there is absolutely no oppor no other sort of you know no yeah. other outcome that's mm. it and, and with the guy at the end with mm. the, the bad guy um mm. yeah it's like he knows he's got the measure of this guy yeah and with all the best will in the world it's not a case of or oh, maybe i'll give him a chance and it'll get better he knows that that bloke's a lost cause yeah mm. there's there's not a shred of humanity left in that man no that's it there's no getting through to him the only time he gets through to him is when like the guy says to him uh you know he's got him on the phone he goes are you willing to die for your friends and then with denzel washington kind of spins that around and goes yeah are you <laughs> and you see him for a minute mm. it's as if somebody's just slightly pulled the rug from under his feet mm. and he's there's a mm. crack in that mm. that brick wall mm. that resolve and i love that in these yeah. sort of films when you see that little slice that little sliver of mm. fear come mm. through them <clears throat> and they know that it's like in fight scenes where you've got this almost invisible bad guy and then somebody cuts their cheek mm. and it's like oh ah this has never happened before mm. yeah yeah yeah. There's a lot of very nice little moments like that. There's a, there's one I like, right at the beginning, where the pimps turn up and uh, bundle Chloe Grace Metz into a car, yeah. mm. and you just see like a shadow almost pass over Washington's face, mm. and for a moment it's not a man stood there, it's a shark. Yeah, and it's yeah. just a moment of just a flick in the eyes. It was actually the eyes just literally sort of go dead and black like a shark, and it's kind of like mm. it's. I think these films work well. One, they have to do the thing where you root for the hero and it's satisfying. Mm. But I think they're at the best where it gives you a couple of moments where you almost are afraid of him and afraid mm. of what he can do. There's, yeah. there's very few actors that can that can do that. I'll tell you, Dan Stevens um, mm. is another actor that can do that. If you ever watch The Guest, yes, you oh yes, that. yes, there's one that you just. Mm. His face doesn't actually move, although it does. And it's just, mm. there's something in his eyes. That's why I wanted him to play bloody mm. um, thingy in the Dark Tower, Roland. Yeah. Because they mm. like, talk about the killer in the eyes. And it's, mm. and Denzel Washington just, uh, it's like I said to Riz, we're sitting there watching it. I said, he's already measured up the coffins. Yeah. That's it. He's already got their dimensions down. And it's like, yep, mm. I need a coffin that's this big, that wide, this long. Yeah. And that's it. It's, you know, there's that mm. just cold. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the, the one thing, I mean, for me, I, with, with these kind of revenge things, I, I and it's one thing I, I was going to ask you guys as well, is do you find it satisfying in terms of a hero being fallible? Or it, or is, because because one thing I noticed with this is it's like early James Bond mm. in terms of once the character is engaged in terms of you know with the threat or the bad guy or whatever as soon as they've done it the instant the bad guy even so much as appears in front of the door in front of the hero you know the hero's gone right fine you're dead you, the guy's just in the the hero is utterly utterly indestructible mm. and completely infallible i mean the one thing with with um equalizer which was kind of both satisfying and also kind of like uh, you've kind of you've done one thing you've kind of 
you've done you've built him up to be such a superhero that literally the only way you know if he gets taken down now you're going to be like well that's disappointing and if he doesn't get taken down now you've got this situation of oh well there's no threat and you in the the film actually had to do that didn't it It had to get all of his friends from b and q stick them in a room and make them (laughs) hostages but there was also (laughs) something else it did though Mm. that kind of um because what you do is you, a lot of the films, a lot of the revenge films, it comes mm. to the bit where, you know, the bad guys run out of bullets and you see the good guy chuck the thing on the floor and they go at it, mm. right? What I liked about this was Denzel mm. Washington knows the capabilities of this guy. And yeah. he's like, no, I'm just going to shoot you. Mm. I'm not going to have a fist fight with you because mm. you may very well win. Mm. And so he takes him out piece by piece from a distance. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah, <laughs> that was different. <laughs> but but what I'm trying to say in this, you know, the same as you know, basically you guys. So you, you, with if he's completely infallible, I mean, I think in the entire film he faces off against so many bad guys, and I think the the worst that happens, I think, is he gets fucked up being smashed into um, into some mirrors, and he gets one shot graze his leg. When he tries um, to take that guy out in the in the cafe, he got one through the yeah. shoulder as well. Oh yeah, and one through the shoulder when he's trying to run away. But but when you look at someone like I don't know, I don't want to see John Wick because I don't really want to compare the two because I don't think they're they're actually comparable when you start getting into the story. But when you look at something like I say, like a James Bond, or you know, and compare it to something like. Um, Let's go the uh, complete other other way. You look at Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones gets beaten up, fucked up, punched up, dragged along, smashed up, and you feel every thud, punch. You know he's he hmm. he becomes the hero because he is completely fallible. Whereas hmm. early James Bond, not like Daniel Craig getting smashed in the bollocks with a steel with a big lump of rope. I'm talking about like your your early Sean Connery James Bonds. And the equaliser in this instance, as soon as they meet the villain, that's it. The villain's dead. You might as well just skip to the end because all the rest is is filler because this guy is so, (laughs) so far ahead of everyone he's facing up against. You're like, well, you you got your your chance. Um, You didn't take it. Well, sorry, mate. You know, the rest is on you. Um, And I don't mind. I enjoyed watching it. But mm-hmm. do you find do you find the invulnerable hero is a is a something that's that is as enjoyable as say a vulnerable or a, a more human hero? Well, I think in this movie, because the, mm. the the way it plays things, it mm. I think cause it gives you human drama that gives it a grounding in reality that mm. sort of helps with that. Mm. Whereas, like in like the, you know, the firing machine guns from the hip without deafening yourself, mm. you know, just the classic walking away, then flying through the air from an explosion, and actually walking away, not having your innards turned into scrambled eggs, mm. you know what I mean? And it's the whole kind of A team sort of throw the bullets around and no one really dies bullshit. Yeah, I think that's more unrealistic. I mean, movies are basically our stories; they are unrealistic. I mean. Mm. A realistic story, halfway through, you get hit by a, some drunk driver purely by mm. chance. had nothing to do with the plot. That would be real life. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? That doesn't make for good storytelling. Yeah. And I, I think it's kind of how you frame your hero and his world that makes mm. the, the difference. I think The Equalizer establishes a world where um, there is law and order, there are cops, people do get hurt, mm. uh, guns are noisy and loud. Mm. And the hero isn't invulnerable. I mm. mean, he got some minor wounds, which is small potatoes, really, compared to, I don't know, say, the suffering in Saw or the stuff, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. But mm. mostly in most action movies, the hero only gets a bit of blood because it looked good. Mm. You know what I mean? Kind of like, like Wounded Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that That's a good example of where it makes that kind of, 
oh god he's actually hurt him jesus in the last fight oh this could yeah. be a tough fight yeah um whereas in like a lot of the army arnie movies the stephen seagull dolph lundgren mm. if they get a cut it's purely just to make them look mean it doesn't you yeah. know <laughs> or put some salt on his face make him look like he's being pulled through his chimney that'll be fine but yeah. you know it's not really the same mm. where you know you have the impression that kind of you know if mccall took a bullet to the leg he'd be improvising some kind of killer crutch mm. with a, a garden rake and fuck somebody up with it <laughs> just give me an image there jim when you said dragging him through a chimney i've just had this image of a fucking Dick Van Dyke rolling out of a chimney with two in, um, oozes going, Chim Chimney, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mary I'd pay Poppins. good money to see that. <laughs> Mary Poppins, too. This time it's personal. Yeah. I've got I've got um, Chim Chimney for you right up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Geezer. <Guitar. laughs> um... Okay, I mean, I was just, yeah, I mean, it was just more, I mean, I like I say, I have no problem with it. Once I know what I'm getting, absolutely not a problem. So once, I, once I'd once i settled into the, you know, as soon as he did that thing with the, um, with the guy in the, um, in the, in the cafe, once he did that and then calmly walked out to the car <laughs> and took photographs of the guys and you're just like, right, okay, well, then either he's absolutely not scared of any of these guys um in which case okay you know <laughs> the the game is up and and the only people who don't know it are the actual villains <laughs> i think you've got to remember this what, what it shows you also mm. is i mean they talked about his past briefly mm. you know they gave um you know they they kind of uh Mm. They go towards it, and it's it, this is a highly trained individual who used to be who used to work for the government fixing things for them by mm. the by the sound of it. That's what I'm guessing. If we have sort of like two bit henchmen, mm. you know, being able to completely take him out, then it's going to be. Well, it's going to be one difficult film. You've got to have a. Yeah. I mean, he does get damaged along the way. He's not. Um, you know, he's not like John Wick's character where he's literally cartwheeling after sort of like, you know, having 15 <laughs> bullets put into him. He, yeah. You know, he's he's hobbling off home, grabbing his Horlicks and putting honey on his leg and mm. stuff like that. There's also the bit where he gets caught off guard a few times mm. as well. So he's not the thing. Like when they get his friends, they bring them along and he, mm. he's like not expecting that at all. Mm. He thinks he's covered his tracks when, mm. and when uh, the guy turns up at his door as well, the bad guy. Yeah, he's kind of taken aback by that and all. Yeah, you but know? well, yeah, you say he you clocks say it's... as to what he is, you know. So where's your yeah. card? Are you not going to leave me a card so I can phone you back later? Yeah, well, that was what I was going to say. It was that whole thing of as soon as he started. To, it's, that's when I just was like. Oh, all right, fine. <laughs> is when he notices someone's coming up the stairs by the wobbling of his keys on the fucking keychain. It's just like, well, okay, right, fine. We are into superhero territory. Yeah, there was some sort of sick sense there. Yeah, and you know, but I don't, I don't, I don't. You know, I'm not dismissing the film for it. You know, it is what it is. I'm just wondering whether or not that's actually. You know, because it, it it gets right what a lot of films get wrong in that sort of like having an impervious villain or an impervious hero. You know, you just go, well, okay, what's the point? You know, you you've got someone who's so indestructible. Is you know, the rest of this is just time, this is just filler between now and just watching a guy get a bullet in the face. I I don't think he was mm. indestructible at all. No? I just think he his level was so above absolutely everyone else. Mm. He could so destroy your cheap everyone thugs. Else. I'm yeah. a professional. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I read books. You struggle reading the safety warnings on your cigarettes. <laughs> but th th then you have like the the Teddy character, mm. and he he does kind of suss it. He, he he does work him out. And that moment in the restaurant where he kills the henchman but brings back the sunglasses, puts them down in front of him, mm. and then he, he says, oh, what, what, do you, what do you do when you, when you look at me? You, mm. you see nothing. You are a bottle cup. You are a bit of lint. Mm. And you think, okay. And then Denzel turns it around on him. 
mm. it, and you see his face kind of crack, and you're like, "Oh, he's got you. Mm. He's he's already he's beaten you." <laughs> yeah, it, but he, I, I don't think he's fallible because he he does get shot. He he does have to work it out. He does the Rambo three of quarterizing his his bullet wound with a doorknob. That's brilliant. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, just old Ronald Lacey from Rangers would love that. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking doorknob. <laughs> no, that's cool though. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I thought it, I got the feeling he, not that he could have been taken out any moment because I thought he was in control of absolutely every single situation he was mm. in, mm. and way above absolutely everyone else. But he's just working on a different level. Yeah, and if you get someone, and Teddy was one of these guys where he could possibly be working on his level. Mm. That's why he kept his distance from him. Because mm. as, as Jim, you, you said, if you get into a fist fight, you could end up coming off worse. That's why you clock him out from, from distance with a yeah. nail gun. Yeah. I mean, okay. I mean, I, like I say, I, I wasn't using it as a negative. I was more just trying to explore. Because the thing is, with a lot of these things, you know, I mean, Jim mentioned Taxi Driver, for example. You know, Travis Bickle sort of you you're all the way through you're thinking okay okay and then when yeah. it comes down to it he ends up in a bloody heap on a fucking sofa and he's <laughs> just like <laughs> oh okay <laughs> he, he wasn't he wasn't quite what we were expecting all along <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, which which in many ways like i say using the indiana jones thing it, it's that i i find a lot of the time that's a lot more interesting because because you kind of get that sense of Okay, well, maybe it's not going to work out the way you ex- you know the way you expect. You know, maybe he there is some sort of danger here, but you know, but the but things like things like when he sort of goes off into the it, to get that guy with the um with the wedding ring, the the nan's ring, sorry, and he just goes off and he goes he goes <laughs> off and just gets a, gets a hammer, and next thing you know, the ring's in the fucking till, and it's like. <laughs> Okay. I love that. He's that wiping the like hammer a, and putting it back. Yeah. yeah. It's like a side quest, isn't it? It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I love all that sort of stuff. And that to me was, that to me, I did enjoy it. A lot of that sort of, and I, and in some ways, I was kind of feeling like, you know what, I could have done with more of that kind of thing. Just watching him sort of do his bit here, there, and everywhere and just be that sort of invisible guardian angel to anyone around him. So, because I, I also enjoyed the bit with the um, the cops, the two oh, yes. cops yeah. rolling <laughs> rolling over the the local businesses, and that sort of thing. And it's just that's that to me was 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 good. I liked all of that a lot. Um, yeah, but I mean, with but what sort of summed up the sort of indestructibility thing for me was the final bit. You know, it sort of like just suddenly jumps to Moscow three days later. Everyone's dead. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm inside your shower, boss man. It's like, uh, right, okay. <laughs> That's what, um... The reason I see that happening is because you have got quite a long runtime already. Mm. But you have, you've used, they've used the, the, the timing wisely. Whereas mm. you would have got like a, a two hour runtime on John Wick. Mm. And like you say, you, mm. you peak in the middle. And then you got nowhere to go, and mm. the story isn't as fulfilling as what it is. Mm. Where you've got these little things of going off and getting the the ring back, and also mm. taking out the the people that are uh, taking money from uh, the the restaurant, etc. Mm. They are like side quests, but they are filling up and building up his character as well. You haven't yeah. really wasted any time whatsoever. No. When he goes off and sees Bill Pullman, and mm. I, I forget the the lady's name, mm. but um, there's a lot of history already there. Mm. Yes, he is doing his homework as well, but he, it, she said oh, he, he, he didn't come for uh, information. He came for um, permission. Like, Permission, yeah, that's yeah. it, yeah, and yeah, okay, I get that. That that mm. really works for me. That that adds so much to it. Mm. it. Even him just sat there, just looking at the I don't know the ducks on on the pond, and she mm. says, you know, mm-hmm. say, say goodbye later, mm. and he says goodbye there, and probably doesn't even say goodbye to them properly. 
Mm. It's I I I got so much from it. There is there's not a wasted scene. I didn't no. sit there going, oh god, well this bit this is the boring bit, isn't it? Okay, mm. fine. I might flip the kettle on now. It's not like that at all. Mm. It, it, there's no wasted bits whatsoever. There's no fluff. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I I have to say that's that was something I did appreciate. I mean, going back to the pacing, but it was like um, the one thing I did appreciate was the fact that he spent more time studying the character, the Robert McCall character between sequences. I mean, it slowly ramped up, but the whole thing of watching his routine, him not sleeping, him going into the coffee shop, the 24-7 coffee shop, sitting down, he reading his books, you know, and all this kind of thing. And the way it sort of built that up, I thought was quite nice. Mm. It The the fact I also liked was that, and this may actually be seen as a negative for most, most film reviews, but it's like they didn't feel like explaining everything. They left it to your interpretation. They left it to sort of like, oh, you know. So what actually happened? There was a hint from Bill Pullman that there was a car bomb, you know, there's a there's the suggestion that his wife's died in some thing that he could have prevented somehow. Um, and so, you know, you put the two together, but maybe they're not. Maybe they are. And the fact that they make him kind of an enigma can often sometimes be a bit of a turn-off. You mm-hmm. know, because you, you, you're essentially, you know, Denzel's, you know, Denzel Washington, Oscar-winning actor, lots of range, lots of depth, you know basically being essentially a blank slate and yet now i think about it i couldn't think of anyone else who could pull that blank slate off the way he does yeah because because it actually is a weird thing that you you're actually having to act act as someone who no one really knows and is so super private that you, even by the end of the film you don't really know him and I don't know. I was I was quite interested in that because it was a case of like normally you know you get sort of like you get the sort of what I call the the, the Rambo moment you know the, and he's sitting there and he ain't got no legs and I this, this sort of thing <laughs> and basically someone just breaking down the entire thing you know a, a different actor and a different director and a different screenwriter would have probably gone for hey it's been it's been 16 years since your wife died in that car explosion and it wasn't your fault. Ramirez, you got Ramirez and all this sort of thing. It would have just been a whole fucking line dump for about an hour. Yeah. And, you know, lots of flashbacks and that kind of thing. And I thought, actually, the fact that it let you put the connections together was actually something that you don't normally see in those kind of vigilante movies, which is also Mm. what I think gave it a different flavour despite all the sort of cliche elements of, like, he's basically Superman. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think basically with McCall, you don't know much about his past, but you get a clear idea of what he believes in. Mm. Yes. Um, mm. And he, and that's where it's different from other vigilante movies, because he isn't motivated purely just by revenge or anger. Mm. It is this kind of, I could do something about this. Mm. All right, I, I, I will do it. Okay, mm. you're not going to let it lie. Okay, now mm. will you let it lie? No. Okay, I will blow up your, <laughs> I'll blow up your harbour. Are yeah. you going to let it lie? Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fetch the Should garden equipment. Ninety-eight thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's oh, it. That's what I love. There's that irony. I, I picked up on the second time that he, he's not giving the Russian guys that money at the start to pay for her. Mm. He, he's paying for their lives. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. If they take the money, they've bought mm. <laughs> their continued existence by not taking the money. <laughs> yeah. Is mm. is good night Moscow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it, it, it is that give it give it one give it one chance. Uh give you give you a one your one out and then that's it. Mm. But uh, isn't this like the ultimate uh, walking away from explosions movie as well. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, yeah. well, he blew up the fucking... He's just like, yes, I'm just walking. I'm walking. Just mm. walking. Just keep walking. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that was beautifully shot, the way you see like a big pipe valve just expand and explode. Mm. Mm. And several of the tanks, you see them just bulge before they blow apart. It's kind of like, that was really well done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was, a, there was a, a terrible savage poetry to it. <laughs> <laughs> and the shockwave that slowly passes through. And his trousers don't even ripple. You're like, oh, he's, <laughs> even his trousers are hard. <laughs> yep. Even his trousers are well disciplined. Yep, there is. <laughs> Denzel Washington, a man with disciplined trousers. Mm. I don't think they really wanted to put that on. <laughs> yeah, yeah so I have one regret. I would have liked to have seen this in a theatre. Mm. I mean, preferably in America where they get a bit more excitable. Mm. I can just imagine the cheers of where he just steps out with the, mm. what, with the sprinkler system going. Holding yeah. that nail gum, yeah. <laughs> yeah, looking like looking like you know God's righteous agent on earth. Mm. Well, I, I I have to say I did like the fact that when the speakers came on, Gladys Knight and the Pips started playing. Yeah, he's just like <laughs> love it. Oh yeah. Was well, that lovely little scene where he's having the laugh with the young lads, and he, yeah. he says claims he was in Gladys Knight and the Pips. Yeah. <laughs> Which one is he? Which one is he? The he's one that one. Is that one with the afro? I was a pip. You were a pimp. No, I was a pip. Yeah. I think Gladys liked the pip. Yeah. I love it. It did make me laugh. No, so yeah, there's there's a lot about it which is deeply satisfying. It's got it, the one thing that this guy has as a character, and like I say, it is all fairly. He's fairly hard to read, and you don't really get a background on him. But the thing that pushes him beyond what normally you get with vigilantes is that sense of justice which is the one thing one reason why i really like that scene with the two cops where is you know you you represent this badge you know this is this is what you represent you are dishonoring this Mm. thing you know and it's all about it's all about making them do the right thing and everything's about the right thing and then he does it with david harbour as well and you know you're basically destroying the badge, you're destroying the honor, you're do, not doing the right thing. And I like that fact that that the vigilanteism doesn't come from revenge. It doesn't come from this sense of sort of like I must avenge my wife. I must do this thing. I must you know my dog's been run over. Arr, kill everyone. <laughs> it's more the fact that it's like I'm doing what I need to do to set the let well to equi- equalize things. I'm setting the scale straight, and then. Yeah. You uh, you put you tip the scales even further. I'm going to tip them back, and it kind of keeps doing that. And that was the one thing I enjoyed was that you know if you just if if they just if he just killed those those guys in that room and then walked away, that would have been the end of it. But the the fact that they the the, the Russians keep escalating the thing and then by escalating it he has to escalate in return rather than what usually happens in these films which is like I say the the from about twenty minutes in it becomes a whole third act which is essentially you killed my dog everyone must die um, and I think I did appreciate that was that you know it was trying to show that the character would only do what was necessary at the time. If they didn't have to, they'd be quite happy working in B and Q. Frankly, <laughs> and you know, and all I all I've got to say now is I've got a lot more respect for the uh, for the Teal staff at home base. Oh <laughs> god, yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess, well, what was I going to say? I mean, I guess the 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 the, the trite question is is you know. Would you would you watch a sequel? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you know, because is or is this like um like a John Wick situation where the first time round, and I really hate bringing up John Wick again, but the first time round, you know, you're kind of like, wow, this is slight. This is a different take on the sort of well worn trope. However, you know, if they go back to the well again and try to do the same thing again. You know, do you think that's going to work? Well, we'll find out on Friday because that's when Equalizer Two turns up on Netflix. Oh, right, okay. Well, there you go. Ooh. That's cool. So I have actually seen the sequel. Yeah, and I did enjoy it. Mm. And actually, I found watching it this time, 
because uh, I saw the Equalizer 2 in between. The bits mm. in the Equalizer 2, I thought they were in this film, which oh, I right. think is a positive recommendation. Okay, fair enough. That's cool. Um, mm. Okay. Well, I, I mean, if it comes out... I think it's it... having the same, the same crew mm. behind the camera mm. makes all the difference. It's... Mm. It's when they pass things to to different hands. This is when franchises really fuck up, I think. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also they didn't rush it out. They really took the time mm. as well. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's plans for a third one or not, but um, I'll probably watch a third one, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to watch the Equalizer 2 again now, so it's kind of, yeah, come on, Friday, come on. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. Because yeah, I've only seen the, the second one uh, once so far, so. Okay. Well, I might, I might, I might well check that out as well. Um, but um, okay, then. Well, the last thing, last thing is the last thing for me. Do you think he goes back to his job at B and Q? You're asking the important questions. <laughs> no, I think if there's going to be a, a bad guy for number three, it's going to be Nick Knowles, um, <laughs> and they'll have a DIY off. That's what it will be. Nice. Yeah, it, or or it could be or it could be Equalizer versus MacGyver. Just just see see which one could could utilize the most ridiculous pieces of equipment to make the most lethal trap. Yeah. Um, well, you can see it though, can't you? Right, you mm. you got that scene where you know uh, Dendal has already kind of taken down one part of the operation. Mm. And Nick Knowles is standing there going, "So Titchmarsh, what happened?" <laughs> But I don't know. He just appeared out of nowhere. He totally, he totally rebuilt my garden fence and made my perineum. I mean, the perineum petunias. Oh, whatever. Perineum? Did he? Oh, it's, this is gone yeah, too. I, no, it took a different turn. Uh, sorry. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a different. My, my complete, my complete lack of um, flower knowledge destroyed that gag. I'm sorry. I can only apologise wholeheartedly. Your um, science teacher is just shaking his head right now. Yeah, yeah. My biology teacher's like, "What did I waste my life with you?" Um. <laughs> anyway, okay. Any last thoughts before we uh, wrap this up? Um. Uh, I, I I was trying to compare it to to a movie, mm -hmm. and I think halfway through I was, I I immediately thought John Wick. Mm. Then I thought maybe Die Hard. But no, Die Hard John McClane gets beaten up a bit more than what he well, does exactly. as well, doesn't he? And he and there's a lot more flying by the seat of the pants. Yeah. Yeah. But um yeah, but I mean I, I, I just like the, the slow methodical uh scenes that he's in. Mm. Especially when all the um all, all the the sprinklers are going off in B and Q and he just <laughs> slowly steps out with that nail gun. You're mm. like, fucking hell, man. Mm. <laughs> Shit's about to get real. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was going to say? What's the other thing? I mean, it was just like, I was going to say, the, the the trite joke about, the, like, do you think he's going to go back to be working at B&Q? But really, the security guard is the only person who knows who it was. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, do you think he does? I mean, I, I, mean, I not that it's super important to Equalizer two, but <laughs> <laughs> I just wondered. It just, it just seemed like really weird that like all this shit kicked off, and how do you explain it to the police? Um, <laughs> like, who knows? Maybe, maybe uh, it was made to look like the security guard was the one that you know saved the day. There's always strings that can be pulled. Yeah. There is. I, I mean, it's one of those, you think, the general kind of amount of property damage you find in the average action movie where it takes place in crowded city streets. Yeah. <laughs> Covering up the equaliser, you know, child's play. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yep. <laughs> cool, cool. Okay, then. Well, any last qu last things or we'll uh, wrap it up there? No, I think I'm good there. Yeah, I'm yeah, good. Same here. Cool, cool. Okay. Well, I think overall, I think, you know, regardless of what we, you know, may have may or may not have said about the character in particular me uh, but you know um i i think it's a thoroughly enjoyable film um and i i i really enjoyed it i thoroughly enjoyed it um but anyway yes so i think that's it we shall wrap it up there but before we do 
Um, let's work on to uh, walk on. Sorry, work on. What am I talking about? Well, I've, I'm starting to run my teeth in for a horse. Um, <laughs> let's go into what we're going to be doing for next week. Now, next week is Darren's choice of film, and he ga- yeah, he gave us quite a selection, but he has made his decision, and yes. it is Dal. It is um, a Coen Brothers movie mm-hmm. starring Brad Pitt. Um, John mm-hmm. Malkovich mm-hmm. and Tilda Swinton, mm-hmm. and it is mm-hmm. Burn After Reading. Burn After Reading, yes. So, um, ha- have we all seen this film? Because I'll just say right up front, I have not. Yep, uh, I have. Yeah, yeah. You've watched this film, yeah? Yeah, I got it. I got it as a present and watched it and thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay, and Jim, I've never seen it. Okay. Mm. Okay, so you've never seen it. And Elton? I have seen it. I mm. can't remember diddly squat about it, though. Okay, that may or may not be a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So we go from one CIA operative to a story about another CIA operative. Yay! Mm-hmm. So, um, okay, so Cohen Brothers Burn After Reading will be our next week's film. You're listening to CIA Month here on the Black Dog. <laughs> yes. NSA, say hello to the people on the other end of your phone line that you didn't call. Um, anyway, so, right, well, that's that. So before we go, let's find out what everyone else is doing. Um, Jim, how, how's Hypnagoria Land doing this week? Um, I've just dropped an episode on horror thing crisps from yesteryear. Mm-hmm. And uh, this weekend, I've got a, a similarly uh, retro exploration of the uh, history of BBC sound effect records, the sci-fi Ooh. ones. Nice, mm. nice, cool. And we can find those all at hypnagoria dot com. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, and what about you, Elton? Uh, you can catch everything I do over at Rogue Two Media dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tomorrow morning, there will be an episode dropped of Shonky Lab, which is all about mathematics. Right. I got to talk to Drew about mathematics. Mm. And yeah, it it was really good. I really enjoyed it. And and there will be more. There will be more. And uh, what else? Oh, Grand Prix podcast. That's all back as well. People going around in circles. Nice. Nice. Like I say, uh, Hamilton the movie. But anyway. (laughs) <laughs> the musical yeah anyway so um yeah so you're doing maths okay well i was gonna say something about that just doesn't add up anyway ha 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 <sighs> sorry end the way i started with a shit pun um right and you can find all my stuff uh wherever you find the username cartoon beardy that's instagram art station and we are on twitter which is at black dog podcast and you can leave feedback uh either via email, which is feedback at blackdogpodcast.com, or you can join us on the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash the Black Dog Podcast. Um, That's it. And Darren, have you got anything? Uh, Yes. Um, This week, I Mm. did a recording of um, The Great Derelicts Mm -hmm. with uh, Andy Palacios, of course, our very own Mr. Elton Ah. there, where we talked about the apocalypse. (laughs) <laughs> the apocalypse or apocalypses we weren't quite sure of the actual um what the plural apocalypi apocalypi oh there we go <laughs> um, okay a, a radiation poisoning of apocalypses there we go How about yes that? yeah that's it a, a, com- a complete collection of apocalypses <laughs> okay cool and where can we find that um that's on the great derelict De- I yeah. don't know the address of the site. Okay, fair enough. Help me. <laughs> it's the com. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm Okey-dokey. really crap at the address thing. I'm no, sorry. No, it's fine. And, and it's uh, Road 2 Media as well. So there you go. Oh, and Road 2 Media. Okay, yeah. right. There mm-hmm. you go. Cool. Right. So that's it. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Elton. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, all you people who leave little comments in the Facebook group who we've been feedbacking this week. And we shall see you all next time for Burn After Reading. Until then, stay safe, and we'll catch you next week. Till then, take care. Tatty, bye. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. (laughs) Ta-da.
Oh, bollocks to it. 